In this video, I'm going to take you through all you need to know about the Ailer Spray Tip. So firstly, I'll take you through uh, four options you have for selecting your spray tip. Then I'm going to go into more detail about how the spray tip is constructed, tell you a bit about understanding the number, the gaskets and this uh, seal that comes with the spray tip, as well as the spray guard. After that, I'm going to go into more detail about the applications and exactly what type of job you have, what material you're using and what spray tip can go with that. I'll also mention briefly uh, the spraying technique and uh, the pressure settings for the spray tip. Finally, I'll wrap up with uh, how to clean it, uh, as well as some common issues that uh, customers have asked us about and how to resolve them. So firstly, you have four options for uh, selecting your spray tip. First of all, you can just look at the technical data sheet. This will give you a recommendation for what spray tip to use depending on the material you are using. Uh, secondly is you can look on the product packaging of the spray tip and that will also give you a suggestion of uh, which materials that it is best used for. When I get to some samples later, you'll see that some spray tips are highly specialized for the material that you're using or for the job application. Thirdly is that we've uh, tried to make it easy for you by putting uh, spray tip tables on our website. So if you visit our website and you go down to uh, spray tip tables in the footer menu, you'll have a section on the material, the spray tip size, and some more recommendations to assist you. Fourthly, to be able to select the right spray tip is using the spray tip number. Now, in order to do so, we'll need to understand a little bit more about uh, what the spray tip number means. So if I grab a spray tip, oh, we've got one here. So the spray tip number will be on the spray tip. And here we have 517. Most of your spray tips will have a three digit number. Some will have a four digit number. The last two digits is the spray tip orifice. That's the borehole size and that's measured in thousands of an inch. So for a 517 tip, we're looking at the 17. So it will be a 0 0.017 width hole. So that's uh, 0.717 inches. The five is the spray angle. You take the five, you put a zero at the end and five gives you 50 and that's a 50 degree spray angle. Now painters and decorators have been using a nifty uh, trick to work out the spray width. So if you're working in inches, you take the, the first digit and you uh, multiply it by two or double it. So in this case uh, with the 517, you take the five, you double it to 10, you get 10 inches and that's giving you a, an estimate of the spray width. If you're working with centimeters, meters, the metric system, then you'll be taking the number five and timesing it uh, by five. So five times five is 25, is 25 centimeters, and that gives you the estimated fan width of 25 centimeters. So now you understood what the number's for, so this will give you an idea of, of the use cases. So for example, if you're spraying a trim or maybe the, the legs on a chair or maybe a fencing where it's quite narrow, you want to be using a, a spray width that's quite narrow. So you'll be looking for spray tips that have uh, single digits, for, for example, the uh, like a, a 108 or a 210 or a 310. So a one is 10 degrees. Uh, 210, 2 is 20 degrees, maybe a 310, okay, it's a bit wider, but those are all quite narrow spray widths. And so you'd be using that for when you want to spray uh, sections that are quite thin. When you're spraying a wall, interior wall, exterior wall, you're probably using maybe a, a 515, 517. So, so five is a lot more of a wider uh, spray fan width. And for example, if you have new construction and you're just wanting to spray entire sections and you, you're not too concerned yet to, to get it uh, very neat, you can use spray widths up to maybe a, a 12, a 21, 12, 23. So that's where it's, I mean, it's more like more of a meter, meter and a bit uh, spray width. That's the number. Uh, let's look more at the spray tip itself. What's it constructed of? You've got the handle, which uh, normally is designed with a, a pointed side, which will tell you the direction of the spray fan. It will have a stainless steel barrel. Uh, in the barrel, you'll have a hole. And in that hole is a tungsten carbide tip. So that's where all the paint's coming through. So it's, uh, these tips will be color coded. So it will give you an idea between the color code, uh, the number, and then also, for example, on this tip, we have LP 
which is letters that might tell you something else about the spray tip. So between the color, uh, LPF for low pressure, uh, you'll be able to identify, okay, is this tip uh, right for me between uh, what spray angle you, uh, you want to use and maybe uh, what material you're using. And if you want low pressure or fine finish, well, the spray tip will have that information on there. If you have four digits on the spray tip number, you use the first two for the spray angle and the second two is your borehole size. The next question we get is, uh, how compatible are the spray tips with uh, your spray gun? Now, to answer that question, we need to know a little bit about what spray guards you're using. So in front of me, I have a spray guard from uh, Fardmax. I've got spray guards from uh, Graco and a spray guard from Wagner. The short answer is that all the guns coming out now have a universal thread size, which is uh, 7 eighths of an inch, which means that no matter which gun you're using, if you're using, for example, uh, I've got here the Fardmax gun. Of course, uh, Fardmax uh, has the Fardmax spray guard go on. But in fact, if I grabbed uh, one of the Graco uh, spray guards, they are also uh, fitting fine. Even if it's a, an older spray guard, one of the newer ones, they all go on there fine. Uh, the uh, heavy duty spray guards, that also goes onto the Fab Max gun uh, and the Wagner one. So there's quite a lot of interchangeability. I mean, if I grab the Wagner gun and I try to grab, say, one of the Graco uh, spray guards, that fits on there fine. Let's see the FTX gun from Graco. And if I grab a Wagner uh, spray guard, this should also go on there. There we are. So you really won't have an issue with what type of spray guard you're using. If you're using any of the ones coming out now and even some of the, the older ones will work fine. There is a 11 uh, 16 uh, spray guard from Wagner. It's not as common anymore, but this one will be a slightly shorter than the a seven eighths one so that's how you can tell the difference unfortunately they're both black uh, so you won't really know from the color but the one will be shorter so uh, these all should look uh, kind of the same the same length and I'm looking at the the bolt the silver bolt at the top and they all look the same and they all fit the same so you won't have an issue where you will have an issue with and and I will go into it a little bit later is that not all the spray tips can fit in the spray guards. And that's where you're gonna struggle a little bit. So to get more into what type of spray tips to use with the applications, we have quite an entire, uh, we've got a very wide range of uh, spray tips uh, in our store here. I mean, we've got a whole, we've got walls and walls full of spray tips. And firstly, uh, I do want to mention a quick note on the uh, spraying technique. And it's really important because, I mean, I did give you an idea of what fan width you are to expect depending on the spray tip. But it is important that you're holding the gun uh, perpendicular to the, the spraying surface and that that distance is between 25 and 30 centimeters, which is about 12 inches. So with that, you want to make sure that you're keeping uh, it's a perpendicular to the surface and making sure that the distance remains the same. And that's why you will see uh, sprayers actually bending their knees as they move down towards the floor is that they're just trying to keep that working distance the same and it's also why you see uh, uh, painters and uh, air sprayers using extensions because that's when you're working on high walls on ceilings you also need to make sure that that spraying distance is maintained one other thing about the spraying technique is the spraying pressure there is a lot of debates online about uh, what is the correct pressure to use depending on uh, the spray tip you're using. The only times that I can really make a recommendation for spraying pressure is when you're working with the low pressure tips and there we work between uh, 800 to 1100 psi which is about between 55 bar and 76 bar and there the range is pretty uh, comfortable and that's like an optimal spraying pressure for your low pressure tips. But as you can see there's quite a, a wide range of tips. We work with so many different materials so to give you a definite uh, optimal spraying pressure, that would be very difficult. You'd have to look at the recommendations of your sprayer, look at the recommendations of your material and, and get a better sense for that. So I won't be able to give you an exact uh, pressure setting to use. And that's something that maybe you can give us a call and we can help you with that.
So let's get into uh, the different types of spray tips you can find and the applications and I'll try help you match some of the sizes. So come with me. All right, so in front of me, I have four or five different categories of spray tips from Graco, Wagner. Let's see what else do I have here. Yes, I've got the Titan here too. Out of the different categories, we've got a standard category. We're going to look at the low pressure tips, fine finish tips, some specialized categories, and I've got one or two older ones that I also want to mention just so you know which are compatible, which are not. And I will bring the spray guards back just so you can also see which ones fit where. So let's start with the standard tips. Those are from Graco and Wagner. We have the blue Rackex tip from Graco. And from Wagner, we have the yellow trade, uh, trade tip 3. Graco's older version is the, the Rack 5, which was the black tip. So if you've got the older version, that's in black. But then the newer versions from Graco is in blue. And then you've got the trade tip 3 from Wagner. Uh, Graco also then has, if you're working with materials that are higher viscosity and a bit more wear and tear, then you go into the brown tip. So these also will have a larger orifice size. Then if you're working with a uh, fine finish, we have the tray tip 3 uh, fine finish from Wagner, which is a purple tip. And from Graco, we have, it's a green tip and it's the FFLP and the FF is the fine finish. Now, when I show the, the low pressure, I will need to mention this. And that is that we do have two green tips from Wagner and Graco, which is our, our low pressure tips. But you notice that from Wagner, the, the fine finish is actually in purple. Whereas with Graco, you have a uh, both in green, which is the fine finish low pressure and just the low pressure tip. So this is where there can be a little bit of confusion. So make sure if you're wanting a fine finish tip from Wagner, you're working with uh, the purple trade three tip. And when you're uh, wanting a low pressure from uh, Graco, you're getting your green tips, but then your fine finish, you'll need to check that you've got the FF on the tip from Graco. And next is the uh, specialized spray tips. So in that case, we've got from Graco, we have the XHD, and this will handle some very extreme pressures. And when you're working with the XHD, you'll have a gray, so it's a gray tip, and you've got the gray guard that goes with it. So having mentioned that, when you're working with Graco, you'll have the blue uh, Graco guard, and this will take all of your blue, brown, and your green spray tips with the blue one. Oh, if you've got, uh, if you've got the older uh, Graco spray tips, so like for example, the black one, that will actually go with the older, the red spray guard from Graco. With the specialized tips, we've got variations for uh, road markings. This is where you're making uh, straight lines, sports fields, uh, where are lines and warehouses for example and we've got from titan the tr1 and it will actually say line striping i believe yeah on the on the packaging which will also tell you and from graco we have the rack five and this is a line laser and that's in yellow and the yellow one will actually also go in the older red spray guard so just to remember you've got the the older black and the the yellow going in the the red one so let's get into some spraying examples, some, some applications and the spray tips you'd use. So let's start perhaps with the fine finish applications where you're spraying uh, lacquers, uh, stains, perhaps some uh, enamels. If you're spraying on woodwork, you're probably going to be working with a 210 or a 310 spray tip. This is if you may be spraying uh, cabinet doors, if you're spraying fences, if you're spraying trim. That's all going to be a 210 or 310. Sometimes if you've got a, a wooden railing on a staircase, you might want to use something as narrow as a 108. I mean, that, that, that's a really narrow spray width, but it, it might be suitable. And perhaps uh, if you've got a new construction and you've got like 100 doors to spray and you've got them all lined up, you might even want to go from a 310 to a 510 just so you can get through all those doors faster. But for the most part, you're working between a 210 or 310 for your fine finish applications working on wood. 
If you move towards spraying interior walls, exterior walls, you're probably going to be working with between a 515 and a 619. So that would be 515, 517, 519, 615, 617, 619. And this is, you're going to have to experiment with this a little bit. It's also what you're confident with. Uh, some painters, when they're outside, if it's quite windy, they don't want their fan width to be too wide because the wind gusts come in and it just creates a bit more overspray than they like. So then they'd actually go with like a 615 or maybe a 515 and, and try to keep things a bit more uh, compact. Uh, when you're inside, maybe you've got more confidence and you can open it up a bit uh, and use a 619. But this is kind of where it's up to you and, and also your material that you're working with and the pressure you're using, it's, it's also going to play a part. So you're going to have to work with that and check. Maybe there's tails in your spray pattern and you need to bump up the pressure a bit or, or change a spray tip to compensate for that. If you are working with new construction, uh, you can go up to something like a, a 1221 or 1223 if you just need to get a lot of paint on the wall and just get through all the walls quickly before the rest of the coats come in. You can do something with that. Having gone through some of the applications, what is the lifespan for some of these spray tips? Well, uh, an often cited a number is between 40 and 50 gallons, which is maybe between 120 and 150 liters for a spray tip. Uh, some, sometimes the, the paint, if it's a really a high quality paint, you might be able to push it into about 60 gallons, so more than 150 liters of paint. If you're having some really terrible paint that's got a lot of clay in it, a lot of abrasive uh, substances, you might see the, the gallons that you're working with drop to maybe 20 or 30. That, that's, we've seen that before and then the, and the spray tips got really worn. And also we have some painters out there, it's unconfirmed, but some of you guys are claiming you're getting uh, maybe like 100 gallons of paint through your spray tip and the, the uh, fan is still coming out really well. So, I mean, if you can prove it, we'd love to see it, uh, but we're probably not pushing the spray tips beyond probably about 50, 50 gallons, 150 liters. So uh, next is cleaning your spray tip. While you're spraying, if you find that it's clogging with your reverse, uh, reversible tips, you can just give it a turn, spray, and you'll actually release some of that uh, debris. And then you can just turn it around again and keep on spraying. Uh, in between coats, especially if you're spraying with a water-based paint, you can just take your gun with the spray tip and spray holder, just dunk it uh, in a bucket of water, and that'll be fine uh, before you you'll begin your next coat. But at the end of the day, you're done spraying, you need to clean your sprayer and along with it, you're cleaning your spray gun, your spray tip and all of that. And for that, you will uh, need to use some of the uh, spray tip cleaners. And we absolutely love Hourglass products. You just pop your spray tips in there, give them a turn and they'll keep it nice and clean. Uh, and it will also free up a little bit of debris that you didn't uh, take out in the beginning. So it will actually keep it all nice and loose and it'll be very easy to clean often. You also get your a spray tip needle, spray tip brushes that also help you uh, clean the hole in the spray tip. We do have uh, some excellent uh, videos dedicated just to cleaning your sprayer, cleaning your spray tip, cleaning your gun. So be sure to check those out because uh, we do go into more detail uh, with that. All right, we're almost done. I just want to wrap up with a few questions. These are uh, common issues that some of our customers have. The first has to do with whether they should be thinning paint if they find that it's too thick. And this is where they have a certain spray tip and they feel like the paint is just not getting through sufficiently. And in that case, we're asking you maybe first just try a spray tip size that's a bit bigger. And if you, you don't have that available, then you can maybe think of thinning the paint or changing the pressure. The next thing is that for those of you that are deciding to use a different spray tip size, just remember that when you're taking a diameter and you're doubling it, you're not just doubling the volume, but you're actually increasing it by fourfold. So you can think of it as like perhaps if you have a smaller box or one by one box, and if you make the one by one into a two by two, where well you can actually fit four smaller boxes into that larger square. And we'll have a diagram come up to show you, but it basically means that if you're doubling the diameter, you're getting a 3.6 to four times an increase in the volume. So do be aware of that when you're increasing uh, your spray tips. The next that I have here is uh, some customers are having leaks that form where the spray tip is. And in that case, you do want to check if in fact you have your uh, gasket or so maybe a missing gasket or the missing seat 
maybe if you've been given the gun or you've, you've just gone to use it uh, and you haven't checked the gun properly, if you find that there's paint leaks, check that the gasket isn't worn or check even that you're not missing a seat. So uh, do, do have a look at that. If you have uh, tiny holes forming on the paint, and this is usually where you've done perhaps like a primer first and then you're spraying regular coat, you, this has happened before where you're switching from an oil-based to a water-based or water-based to oil-based. So there, it's actually got nothing to do with your spray tip or your technique, but it's these tiny holes, the tiny bubbles that are forming uh, in your material that has more to do with the reactions of the oil, the water with the surface you're using. Maybe it's a, a wood material uh, and uh, their, their bubbles being released. So if you do see something like that forming, it's more to do with the material than not to do with the spray tip. So that's it on Ella spray tips. That's as much as uh, I could get through today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you uh, like this uh, video, smash the like button, subscribe, hit notifications. My name is Darren. This video is brought to you by Ellis Discounter. Have a good day and have a great spray.